My legal name is currently Danny Mylan Tripp Jr. Mylan is a family name. It's the name of my great grandfather, who was, in fact, not great. Mylan Tripp, at age 16, lied so that he could join the Union Army and, and fight in the Civil War, which on the surface seems like, yay, he joined the right side so that he could fight against evil. Mm. He didn't do it for that reason. He did it so that he could murder people legally and not go to jail. And then after he got out of the Civil War, he, he was a prisoner of war for apparently a year. After that, he decided to keep it up with the army and, and became a uh, murderous, genocidal persecutor of the, of the American Indian, most specifically the Nez Perce. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Nez Perce, basically, uh, the Nez Perce was led by Chief Joseph at one point. So the Nez Perce were a very large uh, group of people, many different bands of Nez Perce. One of them was led by Chief Joseph. One was led by another fella, uh, Chief Looking Glass. Well, after the U.S. government fucked over the Nez Perce the second time, well, the Nez Perce basically ended up on the run, on the run from the U.S. government. Because, boy, we can't have any of these dirty, filthy Indians in the land where there's gold. Well, we can't do that. So we got to murder all the dirty, filthy Nez Perce who want to go to the reservation and act like good, subservient filth um, and slaves. No, no, no. They can't be slaves. So we got to send them, you know, to the reservation far away from their own lands. Although they were here, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, my great-grandfather, Mylan Tripp, of, of who there is truly nothing great, a truly dishonorable man. Well, this fella was part of the regiment that hunted down the Nez Perce. And the Nez Perce, when they were about a day and a half away from escaping into Canada, Chief Joseph was, was the overall leader of the Nez Perce by this point, trying to escort the entire tribe out of the toxic, evil, genocidal United States to go hang out with the Lakota Indians and Sitting Bull in Canada where they would be safe because the mounted police were grossly ineffective against armed indigenous peoples. So they, were, they would be very safe in Canada. They were about a day and a half away from crossing over into Canada and they thought they were about three, four weeks ahead of the uh, U.S. Army. And boy, were they wrong. The U.S. Army snuck up on them and the crack at dawn uh, because an Indian brave went out to check on the horses. They, it, they jumped the shark a little bit and uh, they basically just, you know, did their best to destroy the Nez Perce. And boy, did they grossly underestimate the fighting ability of the Nez Perce. Boy, they got their asses handed to them real hard. But they, they eventually won because they outnumbered them, etc., had more bullets, etc., etc. An interesting fact of the Battle of Bear Paw is that uh, the U.S. Army took along a howitzer, a cannon, uh, to shoot at the Indians with, set it up at a position, and there were apparently six personnel in the U.S. Army that knew how to operate it. But they weren't able to fire, fire a single shot before the Braves overran the position. And these dirty, stupid, mindless, moron animal Indians, well, they really weren't such mindless, moron, loser animals, it turns out. It turns out that two of them actually knew how to use the howitzer that the army brought along, and they did. So they peppered the fuck out of the U.S. infantry with its army with its own goddamn weapon. Fuck you, U.S. Army, you genocidal fucks. Anyhow, so my great-grandfather, this, this Battle of Bear Paw, Basically, they murdered everybody, uh, and uh, there were accounts afterwards about how squaws or Indian women were, uh, you know, shot point blank in the forehead. And there was an account also of a, of a child, a baby, an Indian baby, being smashed to death with the end of a rifle because he wasn't worth a bullet. So this is how the U.S. government treated the Nez Perce and my great-grandfather, about whom there is nothing truly great, he was an active part of it. And in fact, the way that things were working with the Nez Perce is Chief, Chief Joseph was basically doing his best to shepherd the women and children into safety while Chief Looking Glass led the war party 
defending the Nez Perce against the U.S. government, against its persecution and genocidal treatment of the Nez Perce. Well, my great-grandfather, this Battle of Bear Paw devolved into a sniper battle, and apparently at some point Chief Looking Glass stuck his head out to try to get a survey of the land. He apparently saw, thought that he saw uh, another Indian who had come perhaps to give help, but boy was he mistaken because my grand, great-grandfather shot him in the head. So my great-grandfather is the reason the Nez Perce were destroyed. And he, he's the one that personally murdered Chief Looking Glass. Now it's combat, and so he gets away with it. It doesn't count as murder. It counts as patriotism, the genocidal murder of Chief Looking Glass and the other Nez Perce. That's heroism in, in American U.S. government vernacular. And uh, so this big hero, this big genocidal murderer, uh, you know, he, he ended, he, he destroyed Chief Joseph's spirit. If you, if you listen to the speech uh, of surrender that Chief Joseph gets, uh, made to General Howard, etc., cetera, uh, it, Chief Looking Glass is the first person he mentions. All of our people are dead. Looking Glass is dead. He names his brother and his sister. They are dead. All of our warriors are dead. But he starts with Chief Looking Glass. My great-grandfather murdered the spirit of the Nez Perce, and he literally murdered women and children. This is genocidal holocaust, and there's nothing okay about it. I think, I muse aloud, that the Indian spirits, oh, most definitely should have cursed our family, the Trip family, and it is cursed. And the curse ends with me because I will not reproduce. I will not perpetuate this bloody, violent bloodline. I will not perpetuate the evil. I will not do anything to honor this man. In fact, my father loves this man, honors him. My mother painted a portrait of this genocidal murderer, Mylon Tripp, which hangs in their house. And I tell you, friends, the minute that man's body is in the morgue, the minute I can take that portrait, I am going to burn the shit out of it. I am going to burn the shit out of the memory of this man who should be burning in hell for his crimes against humanity. And I have no idea what to say to any Native American person or any Nez Perce. I am sorry. I am sorry that my great-grandfather was a genocidal murderer. I have no control over history. I am disgusted that my, my, my ancestors were such reprehensible filth. I am disgusted, and all I can do is denounce them. My very own father rejects me because I'm not worthy of him. I'm not a murderer like him. I don't, like, I don't honor murderers. I don't honor him. Yeah, well, I don't. And I'm not going to, because I stand in the truth, the truth of the American genocide of the Nez Perce. How dare you, filth, honor any murderer? How dare you? I swear to you, the minute that this man is in the morgue and I can get my hands on that portrait, I am burning it. And I will videotape it while telling the entire world what a degenerate loser that genocidal murderer was, that man who loved to kill Indians for fun and profit. Disgusting. That man, Mylon Tripp, an old man, he was 60-something, then when he settled down, and he got himself a 16-year-old bride, this pedophile, this disgusting man, had to buy a wife, a little girl, a 16-year-old girl. This disgusting man was so filthy and dirty, there's no way he could attract an actual woman, so he bought a woman on the fucking mail order. A 16-year-old girl, not even a woman, and then he fucked her silly. Knocked out so many kids, you can't believe it. My God, degenerate filth. I tell you, I tell you, this man is burning in hell. 
as will my father, as is my grandfather, Oliver. Disgusting, abusive piece of shit he was too. Just like his son. Unlike me, I am nothing like these, quote, men, quote. I am a real man. One who has no need to murder. And one who does not have hatred of other people on the basis of their skin color. Degenerate scum, racist, filth, myelin trip. I speak against you, and I speak against you in hell, nigger. You are trash, degenerate filth, and I am disgusted to have your name shit branded on me. I am changing my name. I will not wear the name Danny or Mylan or Trip, and I am certainly not junior to any senior. I am in way, no way inferior to a man who sat on his ass for the past 35 years and is such a pathetic, emasculated piece of crap that his mommy wife has to put eye drops in his eyes. And that is what you are, Danny, grandson of the mighty genocidal murderer. You are filth. To the Nez Perce, I would like to share with you, I have been absolutely tortured my entire life for the sins of of this man committed rest assured the sins of the father are visited upon the son to the seventh generation and that's why I will not reproduce I will not pass my great grandfather's sin I will not pass my grandfather's sin and I most certainly will not pass my father's sin on to anyone I will not reproduce and I am doing this to honor you the Nez Perce I am sorry I am sorry that my degenerate bloodline still exists. I am sorry beyond belief that my great-grandfather was a degenerate, subhuman piece of shit, Indian murderer, genocidal asshole. My God, do I hope he is burning, 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 burning in hell a million times what I experience in this life. Boy, he has earned it. So is his grandson, Danny. I tell you, friends, I am disgusted beyond belief to learn that I am descended from this filth. I am disgusted. Please, please forgive me. I would never have chosen to do this to anyone. I am sorry beyond belief for what happened to your peoples because of my great-grandfather and other disgusting, degenerate, racist filth flying the American flag. I am sorry. I am sorry that we so grossly mistreated you. And I am sorry that saying sorry is not and never could be enough. I am truly disgusted. I am so sorry my family did this to you. I am sorry. And I wish that saying this meant anything. I am so fucking sorry. I am so sorry. I am disgusted. I hate this man. I hate him. This man that I named after this disgusting genocidal filth can you imagine being descended from Goebbels or Himmler can you imagine what that would be like I'm sorry I'm so fucking sorry I am so sorry <laughs>